All right, you guys asked for it. So here it is. All right, just real quick before we get into it, this is a redo of the driveline angles video. Uh, I got a lot of comments about the audio quality and so forth. So I just wanted to take that original footage. I did a little bit of post-processing updated on it and here it is. So let's just get to it. Hey, what's up guys? It's Chris. I figured I'd give you a little uh, video. I wouldn't know if I'd call this tutorial or just instructional or what kind of video I'd call it, but I'm going to walk you through some of the steps on doing some driveline angle alignment. Um, I've actually gotten a few questions lately from some folks on vibrations while they're driving that only occur at certain speeds and up. And those are usually due to improper angles on the drive shaft. So I'm going to try and walk you through at least a setup on a single or a one piece drive shaft setup. Uh, it's pretty simple and there's some apps out there that can help you guys through the process. Uh, so, but I'm going to show you here since I've got C10 CJ sitting at a bare chassis right now. I'm going to walk you through that. I don't have it at right height. You will need to do this at right height, but I do have it sitting on the suspension. Uh, so, we'll just go ahead and show you there. There's just three simple measurements you need to make, and then uh, you can plug them into a host of available online calculators and get your driveline angles. General guidance is the angles that you get calculated should be between. 0.5 degrees and 2 degrees. You don't want any more than 2 degrees. That's when you start getting vibration and you don't want any less than 0.5 degrees. That's when you start getting Brunelling on the bearings that are actually in the U-joint cup. So stick in that 0.5 to 2 degree range and you should be good to go and shouldn't have any vibrations on the drivetrain. So with that, let's get to it. Okay, so the first measurement that we're going to take is going to be the engine transmission angle. And we're going to use the crank pulley to do that. So if you have a nice new pulley or you at least have a straight pulley that doesn't wobble, uh, the, the face of this pulley should be pretty flat and perpendicular to the crankshaft line. So what I've got here is I've just got a standard little angle finder that you can buy from the big box stores on Depot or I bought mine from the local uh, rancher supply. Um, and then I've pushed got a couple of pieces of angle iron here that I welded together to make this little fixture that comes in pretty handy for doing this type of measurement. So all I'm going to do, and the reason why this is handy is because I'm just going to set this on the pulley like this, and I'm going to wait for that thing to get a stabilized reading, and then jot it down. So in this case I've got 3.5 degrees, so we'll just go ahead and write that down, and then we'll move on to the next angle. Alright, so the next angle that we measure is the drive shaft itself. Um, you can either just set your angle finder on the drive shaft uh, and let it stabilize, or you can use the, the square. Uh, either way will work as long as you get it on the drive shaft and it's sitting nice and square and perpendicular to the drive shaft. So then we just jot down that angle, which in this case is 1.6 degrees. And that'll be our second measurement angle. Okay, so the third angle is the angle of the pinion. And there's a couple of different ways to measure this. Um, I've got the drive shaft installed and I've got a nice big fat beefy 1350 U joint. So I've got this big old flat surface up here on the top. So what I can do is I can measure that. If you don't have a nice surface like this, you might have to take the drive shaft off and use the face of the yoke to get a good measurement. That's where this guy comes in handy because then you can just set that up against the, the yoke like that and then get a measurement. So in this case here, I'm just going to set right on there like that. Make sure that you've got the angle finder still uh, in line with the drive line. Don't have it like this or cockeyed or something like that. You do want to have the angle finder in line with the drive line. Uh, give that a little bit to stabilize and then we jot down our third measurement which is 2.7 degrees and then we can plug those into an online calculator and find out what our driveline angles are. So let's go ahead and do that. Alright hey guys so 
we're now inside and we're we're on the computer and we're using this uh, operating angle calculator that Spicer is providing. Um, these guys make U joints and other drive lane parts. Um, they're actually really good U joints. This is what I've got in the truck right now is Spicer 1350 U joints. So. Uh, so this calculator is really nice. Um, the, the link's right up here in the address bar, but I'll, I'll also include this in the description down below the video here. Um, it, if you can't remember exactly what everything you need, you can come to this web page and you click on this little I right here. And it's actually going to give you a lot of information on how to take these measurements. So, and they've, they've got guidelines and everything in here as well. Um, so... There's a lot of information right here, even though it doesn't look like much. It's a lot of pertinent information. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and minimize that and show you the actual calculator. This actual calculator is really nice because you can change the number of shafts. And so you can go from one shaft or the other common uh, setup that guys run is they run two shafts. And you can see that it adds a coupling shaft in here now. So this would be like first drive shaft. And then you'd have a coupling bearing between the first drive shaft and the second drive shaft. And then finally your, your pinion. And if you kind of forget what all this stuff means, you can click this little show diagrams feature right here and it brings up these diagrams and shows you exactly what you're talking about. Now one of the deficiencies I found using this thing in Chrome is that when you do that, there's no way to scroll this little tool in the window. So it, unfortunately the bottom stuff gets hidden on me. I have no way to see it. So um, I'll just hide those and then I'm going to go back to one shaft. So what we measured out in the on the C10 was we measured 3.5 degrees on the engine and that was down. So we're going to click down and then we measured 1.6 on the drive shaft and that was also down. And then we measured 2.7 but we called it up but they're referring to a slope here, so even though we call it 2.7 on the pinion up, uh, it's actually down in their calculator. So their their down angle, if you go back up to the the information here, refers to the slope uh, from the front of the vehicle to the back of the vehicle. So when you look at the pinion, the pinion is actually sloping down from the front of the vehicle to the back of the vehicle. Even though we call it pinion up, it's actually sloping down. So when you do that and get the calculated results, you see that even not at right height, I'm still within two degrees on the angles that we're calculating. Um, and these are the important angles that matter right here is getting these angles to a, in, in that 0.5 to two degree range, ideally 0.5 to 1.5 degree range. Um, so it, it, it's really helpful just to, to make sure you got everything in spec because if these numbers are out of spec, you're, you're probably going to get vibrations in the drivetrain and it's going to be a function of the speed so you're not going to notice it at lower speeds and then all of a sudden you'll get to a certain speed like 45 miles an hour and you'll start getting a vibration and the vibration may persist past 45 miles an hour or it may only last for a few miles an hour it just depends on a lot of things to do with the vehicle and you know if there's stuff in the vehicle that can damp the vibrations out or not so um, but the easiest thing to do is just to get these angles uh, in spec. And then the other thing to note is this is only the vertical angles. You, you can also have a compound angle as a result of having horizontal offsets between like the tail shaft and the pinion. Um, there's not much you can do about that. So unfortunately, you know, you, you really don't want your engine to be sitting at an angle. And if you've offset your pinion that results in that offset angle, then you're kind of stuck. So the best thing you can do is to get these angles as small as you can. So like, you know, try to shoot for that 0.5. Uh, that just helps the compound angle be as small as it can. That's pretty much all you have is the adjustability in the vertical direction. So, um, but with that, I mean, it's, it's pretty simple. You plug the numbers in the calculator, you get the calculated angles, you see that they're less than 2, greater than 0.5, and you're good. If these are greater than that, um, you just have to think about it and decide if you if you want to try that or not. I mean, there's there's nothing set in stone that says you have to do it. Just you got to road test the vehicle and see how it drives if you're outside of that recommended range. 
Um, you probably will get some accelerated U-joint bearing wear if you are significantly above two degrees, so that's one thing to consider uh, in addition to vibration. But, all right, so with that, we'll, uh, we'll wrap it up. Okay, and some, some brief final thoughts. Um, just keep in mind, you do need to have the vehicle level during that whole process, and you do want to have it at right height. So, if you can't crawl under the vehicle while it's at right height, um, you can jack it up, but make sure that you keep the vehicle setting on the suspension. Don't put jack stands on the frame, because then your suspension will droop, and you're not going to get the readings that you need to get, because the drive shaft spends most of its time at right height. So those are the angles that you want to actually measure. And the other option is you could use cribbing, like you see a lot of guys do. Uh, they'll have the car sitting up on these 2x4 looking stands. That's just a, a, a generalized rigging term, cribbing, that's used to raise heavy objects up. So you just stack the car up on those, you get it high enough to where you can get under it, and take the measurements. So with that, I hope that can help you guys out and get your driveline in the right angles and so you have a vibration-free driving vehicle because otherwise it will not be comfortable. All right, with that, talk to you guys later. All right, thanks for watching. Hopefully this updated version helped you guys out. Hopefully the audio was a little better than the original. Uh, and if you liked it, please hit that like button. And if you want to help me out and keep me motivated, hit that subscribe button. Again, thanks for watching. See you guys in the next video. So you wonder what kind of audio adjustments get made. So this is a clip that's from the camera that we're recording on right now. This is a GoPro clip that's been corrected, and this is a GoPro clip that's uncorrected. You can just look at the audio peaks. Now the disadvantage is because this was so low, as I do this correction, you're going to hear a little bit more of the noise floor. That's a hiss that you hear in the background between when I'm talking. So that's definitely why you want to get more like this. This is uncorrected audio straight out of the camera. So very minimal adjustment needed on this with the proper microphone setup versus a GoPro, the Hero 3, you know, with its internal mic, so not that good. So hopefully this gets the job done. All right, let's get out of here. Okay, I mean, we are talking this little thing. You know, there's a microphone like right there, and there's another one somewhere on here, versus, you know, that. I mean, this thing's got a dead cat filter on it. Come on now.